Recently, Japan announced the successful live fire test of an electromagnetic railgun aboard, the test ship Asuka. The weapon can launch projectiles at speeds exceeding Mach 6, approximately 2,300 meters per second, capable of both anti-ship strikes and missile interception. Japan plans to complete the acceptance of anti-ship and air defense versions by 2027-2028, with the intention of equipping 27 Maya-class destroyers with railgun, systems as standard by 2030. This move aims to strengthen missile defense while reducing interception costs. In parallel, Japan has acquired large-scale Tomahawk cruise missiles with ranges around 2,600 kilometers in GSCR air-to-ground. Missiles exceeding 800 kilometers. Domestic development is also accelerating, including improved Type 12 anti-ship missiles with a 900-kilometer range and hypersonic missile programs, signaling a shift toward enhanced strike capabilities that go beyond a purely defensive posture. Strategically, Japan has been transforming its fleet, gradually converting helicopter destroyers into light aircraft carriers, capable of carrying X-35B stealth fighters and building a far sea strike group with aircraft carriers at the center. Complemented by offensive submarines, the deployment of anti-ship missiles and electronic surveillance systems on islands near Taiwan, such as Tokonoshima and Kogu, reflects its broader push for regional influence. Japan has also expanded ammunition, depots, and established maritime logistics units to ensure sustained operations in the event of conflict. However, several technical challenges remain. The railgun's barrel currently has a limited lifespan of about 200 rounds, far below traditional naval guns that can fire thousands of rounds. High power consumption, complex integration, and operational reliability are ongoing, hurdles that have historically slowed adoption, even in the United States. Overall, Japan's developments highlight a strategic shift from purely defensive postures to proactive, potentially preemptive capabilities. While these moves may alter regional balances, they are unlikely to dictate outcomes in isolation. Modern military competition is systemic, relying on networks, logistics, and complementary platforms rather than a single weapon. Understanding these developments requires considering both technological progress and the broader strategic intentions behind them.